Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the 15th lecture. Okay. In previous video, we have started Kennedy's theory for designing of uh, sorry alluvial canals. It's not non alluvial. It's for alluvial canals. Okay. Let me cut it first. It's for alluvial canals, right? So in today's lecture, this is the second part for our uh, Kennedy's theory in which we are going to discuss about the design steps. So first thing is first, we must know that we must know a bit history about Kennedy. RG Kennedy was actually an executive engineer in Punjab PWD. Uh, it was in, I think, he gave this theory in 1830. Okay, before the partition. It is before partition of India and Pakistan. Okay. He was ex executive engineer in Park PWD. thing is that he did his studies based on an existing irrigation canal system system in subcontinent and uh, known as upper bari doab upper bari doab canal system this whole research and study was based on this uh, irrigation canal system which was there in the upper body okay and this is known as we call it we call it upper u p d c s upper body the up canal system and he chose this system He chose this irrigation system because there was no silting and scoring in this system, in this irrigation system of upper body low up canal system okay so from his study he has given a theory from his study he said that he concluded two points two important points the first one he said is that he said sediments sediment particles are in 
suspension due to Aries generated only from the bottom there is bed bottom of the canal okay and the second thing he said let's discuss this point first here Aries means sorry Aries means disturbance okay disturbance so he said that sediment particles are in suspension they are due to the disturbance which is being generated from the bottom of the canal okay let's try to understand it with a figure let's say this is a cross section of a canal okay and what else let me draw a line okay this is the full capacity level of the canal so according to uh, Kennedy and let me choose the blue color there are particles right suspended particles let's take example of this one these are suspended due to some forces generated due to the uh, due to disturbance here in the bed of the canal okay this is bed right and the disturbance which is created here in the bed is known as the disturbance is known as eddies right and he said that according to his statement according to Kennedy's no eddies are generated from the sides from the side slope of canal this was his statement he said eddies only generate from bottom of the canal or bed of the canal so this was his theory right so because of these eddies eddies forces the particle remains suspended okay like this is a particle right it wants to move downward because of its self weight weight of particle is making it to move down but due to the presence of these eddies eddies forces they repel it back so that's the reason they are being suspended these eddies are f and where of the particle is w got it this was the first conclusion or first theory or hypothesis he gave on the basis of his studies and the second point he gave 
he mentioned was number two is that these arrays are generated due to friction between flowing water and what and bottom of and the bottom surface of canal hence these you can say hence uh, according to Kennedy these eddies or disturbances are sufficient enough to keep the particles in suspension okay so uh, based on his observations let me choose blue color okay so based on his observations his observations of what observations on upper body though of canal system right based on his observations on upper body though of canal system Kennedy defined a critical velocity which is represented with V naught okay so for critical velocity there will be no silting and no scoring got it so mathematically mathematically it it was given as follows follow it was given as mathematically we can represent critical velocity according to Kennedy is critical velocity is equal to V naught is equal to C1 Y C2 there is there is C1 and then Y the power of y is c2 okay this is the equation uh, given by Kennedy for critical velocity and here in this formula what is y what is c1 what is c2 and what is v naught So here y1 is representing the depth of canal in meters and c1 is constant and its value is 
0 0.55 and C2 is another constant with a value of 0 0.64 okay and v naught as we have already mentioned v naught is critical velocity got it so this is critical velocity given by kennedy based on upper body of canal system right where he said that there is no silting and no scoring got it so this equation equation number one name it equation number one or a equation number a is based on no silting and no scoring right so you can further simplify this formula and can write it as on on the basis of c1 and c2 values a can be written as v naught is equal to c1 as we said that c1 is equal to 0 0.55 okay multiply by y and y is the depth and c2 c2 is 0 0.64 so we can write this the above formula as this one too this is equation b but the problem is that this formula is being defined uh, we can say that this formula for critical velocity is defined for upper body doab canal system right because he studied on this canal system only but it is not applicable universally universally for all canal systems got it so what we are supposed to do if it is not applicable for every canal system then hence we have we have a modified version of this formula which can be applied for all canal systems other than upper body canal drop system upper body canal drop system right so what we have added we have added a, a, a value or coefficient which is known as critical velocity ratio we have modified this formula to v naught v naught is equal to v naught is equal to m c1 y c2 okay the only thing we have added is m what is m m here is remaining c1 c2 y and v naught are same thing we have just added m m is actually the let's write it in text so m is critical velocity ratio which is known as CVR critical velocity ratio 
so on the basis of the above formula can you uh, let me know what is going to be the value of m for upper body doha canal system obviously if you put one in place of m then this will become similar to this formula right so the values of m the value of m for upper body canal sorry upper body upper body do up canal system will be equal to 1 but in other cases m will be equal to will be in a range of uh, 1 point sorry m will be equal to in a range of 1.1 to 1.2 it, it will be 1.1 to 1.2 for coarse sand if the sand in the canal is coarse then m the value of m will range in between 1.1 to 1.2 and m is equal to in the range of 0 0.8 to 1.0 if your canal is made up of fine sand got it so these are values for m three things right for upper body dwarf system there is one and for coarse sand it will range between 1.1 and 1.2 for fine sand m value of m will range between 0.8 to 1.0 got it so let's try to define the steps for canal design using uh, kennedy's theory design steps okay let's put a heading here with black color and capital letters design steps involved in kennedy kennedy's theory for alluvial canals right this is only used for designing of alluvial canals so let's underline this so the first step we got step number one for designing is finding out critical velocity which is we represent it with v naught right v naught the first thing we need to do is find out the critical velocity sorry okay critical velocity the first step of designing is critical velocity again we know the formula to find out the critical velocity what is that that is v naught is equal to m c1 y c2 okay and we can write this formula as v naught is equal to m the value of c1 is 0 0.55 
and y c2 is 0 0.64 okay and this the value of m will depend upon either your mm, canal is uh, constructed on fine sand or coarse sand okay and now what what is going to be the value of y in this case for for the depth let me choose the blue color okay for the depth which is represented by y of canal we will use heat and trial method that is we have to assume a trial depth y and calculate critical velocity then later on we will compare this value of critical velocity with the mean or average velocity which we will find in later stages of design okay so the depth actually depends upon the discharge discharge of the canal as we have done numericals on the discharge capacity in our previous lectures so after getting the value of the discharge you can assume the depth and we have a table which defines the depth for uh, different values of discharge the table is discharge shown by q and for each respective discharge we have a depth to assume if the discharge value is in between 0 to 20 unit of discharge is meter cube per second right there will be a value for depth if it is in between 20 to 40 we got a value for depth if it is in between 40 to 80 we have a value of depth and if the value is greater than 100 then we will assume different depth so if the discharge is in between 0 and 20 then we will assume depth as 1 meter if it is in between 20 to 40 we will assume depth 2 meters if it is in between the discharge in between 40 to 80 then we will assume 2.5 meter depth 20 to 40 40 to 80 sorry it's then this one is 80 to 100 if it is a bit in between 80 to 100 then we will assume the value of depth is 3 if it is greater than 100 then we will assume 3.5 as the depth of canal got it so this is the table we got discharge value the depth values for against each discharge and then the value of discharge is in meter cube per seconds right the value of this uh, unit of discharge and the depth air is in meters so this is the first step 
for designing here we have to assume the depth right now the second step let's move to the second step where is the second step second step in designing of alluvial canal using Kennedy's theory is finding the cross sectional area of flow okay which is represented with a so this is second thing we need to find let's underline it okay so for, for cross-sectional area we got a formula the formula is cross-sectional area required is equal to discharge divided by discharge divided by critical velocity okay q is discharge and v naught is equal to critical velocity okay this is the second thing we need to find and add a page and move to the third step in third step what we are supposed to find we are supposed to find parameters of canal by parameters we mean, mean slope depth okay slope and depth of canal and bed bed width depth of canal and slope the third step is finding out parameters of canal this is third step okay so for parameter of canal we will assume a pardon me if the spelling of trapezoidal is wrong uh, we need to assume a trapezoidal section and we'll find the various parameters of canal such as depth slope and width of bed okay so let's say we have a uh, cross section of canal The cross section of a, of a trapezoidal canal okay and let's change the color let's say from here to here it is B 
ओके इन कारित विड्थ ऑफ द बेड दिस इज बी दिस इज बी एंड द डेप्थ ऑफ कैनाल इज y and the side slope this is the side slope right and let's draw the level this is the top level of the water right so this is depth and we can represent this with this is d or you can say it y depth of canal this is going to be b and this is the side slope if side slope is given to you then it's fine otherwise we need to assume side slope here is half horizontal to one vertical okay so the side slope is going to be one vertical and half horizontal got it so this remaining distance is represented with x what is this remaining uh, distance let me show you if you draw a line from here to here right straight line here to here this distance is going to be equal to the b right this is also b this is equal to b so from here we can find out the different parameters or dimensions let's try to find it out first try for area area will be equal to cross sectional area cross sectional area will be equal to we have uh, one two three parts right there are two triangles and one one is rectangle three shapes so what will be the cross sectional area cross sectional area will be area of rectangle part plus 2 into area of triangular part right there are two triangles one is this one one is this one and there is one rectangle so what will be the area of rectangle there is going to be length multi uh, breadth multiplied by length right two dimensions this will be the area of rectangle plus 2 into area of triangle is 1 upon 2 base multiplied by height right so in this case 1 upon 2 what is base here base is x and height is y this is not multiplied this is x right so this two will cancel with the other two they will cancel out and the remaining part will be cross sectional area that is going to be equal to by plus xy okay this is formula for cross sectional area and now let's try to find out the value for depth and x and slope for slope you can see that from here or this triangle can we draw it like this this is x right 
this is depth y and this is the angle and this angle is 90 degrees and this is x and this is y right and these uh, side slopes are given to us as 1 vertical and 1 by 2 horizontal what is so can you find the value of x from here x divided by y can be equal to because this x is horizontal part right y is vertical so horizontal divided by vertical is equal to horizontal slope divided by vertical slope so on further simpli simplification we can get x is equal to y by 2 so this x is equal to y by 2 this is one relation and another relation we can note down is that from this mirror triangle can we say that by using this formula this is slope right from here to let me draw a line from here to here what is this from here to here this is slope right what is this slope going to be equal this slope will be equal to x square plus y square whole under root right so we already find the value of x here if we replace that value here we will get slope as slope is equal to under root the value of x is y divided by 2 whole square plus y square on further simplification you will get the value of slope as 5 y square divided by 4 under root okay how oh, if you want to do it further more in few steps that will be y square divided by 4 plus y square when you take the least common factor 4 will be least common factor and this will become y square plus 4 y square when you add them up you will get the answer 5 y square divided by 4 this is the value for slope ok let me uh, highlight them to make them more clear red ok this is the value of x this is our slope okay. this is formula for slope this is cross sectional area ok that's it these are all the parameters which we are supposed to find in this step so let's move to the next step this was our uh, third step right in third step we we find out the parameters of canal now we are moving towards our fourth step fourth step fourth step is calculation of hydraulic radius and we represent it with R capital R and let's see how we can find out the hydraulic radius for hydraulic radius we got formula 
which is capital R sorry capital R is equal to this is equal to cross sectional area divided by weighted parameters weighted parameters right so this is the formula we got cross sectional area divided by weighted parameter which is equal to cross sectional area is a right we already found it found it and weighted parameter is represented with w or you can represent it with p2 weighted parameter wp or just p p is weighted parameter and a is the cross sectional area from this formula from this mathematical expression we can find out the hydraulic radius and the next fifth and important step is finding out the mean velocity we already find out the critical velocity right now we need to find mean velocity or we also call it actual velocity which is represented with v okay this is our last step and fifth step why we are finding the mean velocity because for designing purpose as we have discussed above that we need to find out both critical velocity and as we said here for the depth y of canal we will use hidden trial method assume a trial depth y and calculate critical velocity and later on we will compare this value of critical velocity with mean velocity average velocity or actual velocity which we are now finding in the fifth step which will which we will find in the later stages of design right so we reach there so here we are supposed to find out the mean velocity or actual velocity for actual velocity we are going to use we will use can you suggest do you have any idea which formula we are going to use to find out the uh, mean velocity or actual velocity we will find sorry we will find it by using Casey's formula or we will also use Cutter's formula or Manning formula okay so let's try to write down the formulas the first one is sorry Jesse's formula right Jesse's formula what is Chase's formula? Chase's formula is V is equal to under root sorry let me draw it with line so it will become more under root R multiply by S and the unit of this velocity will be in meter per second and in this formula what is r r is representing the hydraulic radius and what is s s is 
bed slope. If this bed slope is given to you, then that's fine. Otherwise, we have to assume assume bed slope. If it is given to you, that's fine. Otherwise, we need to assume bed slope in between 1 upon 3500 to 1 upon 5000. In between this range, we need to suppose the value of bed slope. Okay. What? If not given... Assume it. Got it. And the other formula we got is one thing we missed it missed here. There is a C let me write it here. C V is equal to C under root RS. What is C? C is known as Chase's constant. And the value of Chase's constant depends upon it actually depends on surface surface of canal or shape of canal okay so how can we find this value of c for value of c we got a formula chase is constant chase is constant can be found by using formula which is C let me write it down here because it is a bit expanded and lengthy formula C yeah, this constant can be found by using this equation 23 plus 0 0.00155 divided by S and then plus 1 divided by N and then 1 plus 23 don't get confused I, I need to draw the lines after that you will come up with the n formula 0 0.00155 divided by s into n divided by under root r let me now draw the lines. This is the main division 23 plus 23 this and here is division okay and then 1 plus inside the bracket 23 plus 0 point 0, 0, 1, double 5 divided by s then multiply by n divided by under root r got it this is the formula most of the time you will get the value of c if you don't have the value of c you need to use this formula to find out the value of c so this was Chase's formula the next one is Manning's formula and 
to find out this constant this is actually known as we call it this is known as quarters formula to find kg's constant okay now the next thing we need to find is mannings we need to use manning equation to find out the velocity in some cases cases we need to use manning's equation to find out the actual or average velocity so we must know the formula given by manning manning's formula to find out the actual velocity so the manning's formula is mathematically expressed as v is equal to velocity is equal to 1 divided by n multiplied by r raised to the power 2 divided by 5 sorry 2 divided by it's not 5 is 3 2 divided by 3 multiplied by s raised to the power half okay so what is n here we already know r r is the hydraulic radius and s is the bed slope right we need to know n what is n here n is equal to it is known as manning's coefficient or we call it roughness coefficient roughness coefficient so the value of this n depends on what the value of n value of n depends on two things depend depends on surface either your surface is rough or smooth right if it is rough the value of n is going to be high if it is smooth the value of n is going to be less got it so that's it and we got some limitations limitations of uh, kennedy's theory these are the design steps you need to follow now at the end of the lecture let's write down the limitations of kennedy's theory limitations of kennedy's theory okay what are the limitations let's write down the limitation before that let me highlight it okay limitations of kennedy's theory i'll give you give you guys these notes after the completion of the uh, completion of our course in the form of pdf i'll provide these notes the, so the first limitation is that let me choose the blue color uh blue okay as we are assuming right assuming bed slope
problems can be created because throughout canal the bed slope may change it will not remain same right may change and we are we are here assuming a constant bed slope value so we have constant bed slope value throughout so this is major problem drawback of this theory second is that Kennedy he did not give equation for bed slope he just assumed it right and just assumed this is the second limitation third we can say that in this theory eddies are assumed to be only generated from the bed of the canal right we have discussed that according to Kennedy the areas are just generated we have discussed here right these are the eddies eddies are just generated from the bed and he said that side slope on side slope there are no eddies so this is another drawback in this theory, in this theory, areas are assumed to be generated only from the bed of the canal, but in actual areas generate from side slopes too okay and then next thing the limitation is that he has we got a value here right CVR Do you remember CVR which we have mentioned here Where is CVR? We got a value of CVR right here for M, 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 M. Yeah, this is CVR. These values he has actually assumed were random values. He didn't do any calculations or research to get these values. He just used random values to. He just used random random values here. these values of CVR these values are just assumed by Kennedy he didn't perform any calculations or experiments to find out these values so these are just assumed values right and then this M is known as CVR right CVR so this is another limitation of this theory that the CVR values are just assumed by Kennedy. Okay. The next limitation we can write is that he did not consider the width to depth ratio 
w upon d ratio he didn't consider it and the last limitation is that he also did not consider the silt concentration concentration in the canal system so these are drawbacks and limitations of kennedy's theory so kennedy's theory suggests to us to use Chedi's equations to calculate the mean or actual velocity so then compare now the last step we need to do after uh, we need to do after finding the uh, fifth step mean velocity or actual velocity what we need to do now now at the end we need to compare the values of critical velocity right which we represented with v naught and the mean or actual velocity which we represent with v so after comparison we will get two things one can be if our v which is mean or actual velocity is equal to v naught that means that our calculation are correct or okay because we have assumed the depth in the first step right so that means assumed depth is correct but if v which is actually last right is not equal to v not is not equal to v naught if both the velocities have a higher difference then we need to change the depth and try another depth okay then we need to take or consider trial trial depth again with a different value of depth and repeat all design steps again and we need to repeat these steps again and again until until we get v is equal to v naught okay so there is a thumb rule like as we said that we are going to take the uh, depth trial again right we need to change the depth value and do the design steps again so to change this depth value we have a thumb rule we have a uh, thumb rule for guessing the correct depth for second trial 
what is it going to be it will be if v v is greater than v not okay means if actual velocity is greater than critical velocity then increase the depth increase the depth y or reduce the bed slope but if v is less than v not then decrease the depth y or increase the bed slope got it because you know we we have uh, assumed in our first step right in our first step what was our first step yeah design first step here we have assumed the depth y right let's say we have in our first case we have assumed the depth as 2 and the flow given to us was in between 20 to 40 uh, like something like 25 meter cube per second and we assume the depth as 2 on the basis of this depth 2 if we are getting the value and values of v naught and v if the value of v and v is greater than v naught in that case then we will increase the depth right like in uh, previous trial we if we guess the depth is 2 then in the second trial we will increase it to 2.1 or 2.2 if v is greater than v naught if v is less than v naught then we will decrease the depth or we can change the bed slopes in this case we will reduce the bed slope in this case where v is less than v naught we will increase the bed slope this will help us to decrease the number of trials okay otherwise it can go up to 5 trials or 10 trials so repeating the same design steps 5 to 10 times is actually very lengthy and headache so we need to remember these thumb rules so let's highlight these important points with red color these are thumb rules you need to remember okay this is one important thing and these are limitations and formulas this is Manning's formula and then we got this is Cotter's formula and this one is Chase's formula for finding out the mean velocity or actual velocity then we got formula for finding the hydraulic radius then these are parameters cross sectional area slope and x and y and this is formula for finding out the cross sectional area of flow and in step one we got this formula to find out the critical velocity v naught okay so these were the design steps which we were supposed to follow for designing alluvial canal you need to remember this important point we are we can just design alluvial canals using kennedy's theory okay we cannot design lined canals or non-alluvial canals we can only design alluvial canals using kennedy's theory so that's it these were the steps for designing first step was critical velocity v naught 
then we will find cross sectional area flow a in step 2 in step 3 we will find out the parameters of canal and in step 3 we will find out the calculation of uh, we will do the calculation for hydraulic radius r then we will find mean velocity or actual velocity then we will compare both velocities and check out either v is equal to v naught or it is not equal if it is equal then that's fine if it is not equal then we need to repeat all design steps by take considering another depth so the depth will depend upon these thumb rules if it is greater than v is greater than v naught then we will increase the depth if uh, v is smaller than v naught then we will decrease the depth so that's it in next class we will practically solve a problem by using these uh, methods these uh, design steps and we will try to design an alluvial canal so till then goodbye see you guys in next video